welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, Kenneth Lang here, my Tuesday weekly LinkedIn Live event. Um, top on the top right there, got Adam Lang. I believe you're checking in from Northeastern in Boston. Mm -hmm. And then we have Brianna Stanfield, my daughter-in-law, with um, Brian Lang. My my older son is in a meeting now. Um, and uh, you guys are in Montclair now, right? We are, yeah. So we had a lot of celebrations this past uh, weekend. Brianna, it was your birthday. A very mm -hmm. happy, happy birthday. And Thank you. Um, what I wanted to, I had hoped that Brian's girlfriend would be part of this. And as I said to the to My girlfriend friend. here, she's not here, but she actually gave us something, which I'm going to share with the group. We have flowers. Uh, flowers from Brianna. Uh, Allie. Flowers from Allie. Oops. And so they just came in. And my challenge was to make sure that they came before this call was happening, because otherwise I would have had to excuse myself um, to actually um, ring get the doorbell. Would have been a teachable moment. So just with some shout outs here. Um, got Brenda Miller here from Metro Detroit. Checking in. Thank you very much, Brenda, for coming here. Christine Dykeman down the shore, who Adam actually thought, Christine, that you were Rachel. Um, when we were in Atlanta. So now that we can clear that up, and of course we have uh, Michelle Norton. What I wanted to talk about today with the group was the idea of um, job search, because all of you are in, in slightly different places. Um, Adam, you're um, you're going to be starting a new job next week. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations on that. And Brianna, you're, um, you're finishing up your PhD. Um, That's right. In Rutgers, Newark, and Brian is uh, actually working right now. He'll be back in a sec. So um, let me just start, ladies, first, Brianna. Um, what are you getting? Tell us a little bit about you're getting your PhD and what are you looking to do and, and all that? Thanks, Ken. So I am getting my PhD in neuroscience. So I mm -hmm. study microcircuits um, in the rodent brain. Um, and during this whole process, it's been it's been a long process. I'm just finishing up my seventh year. Um, I actually discovered my love of data and my love of data science and processing data. Um, you know, the brain is a really complicated structure, and uh, in order for us to really understand what's going on, um, there are a lot of really complex mathematical, um, statistical, machine learning algorithms that we use. Um, to understand uh, what neurons in the brain are doing. Um, so in the process of getting my PhD, I've learned some of those techniques. Um, and I want to sort of make a transition at this point um, into doing data science full time. So I'm currently on the market um, for a data science role. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 been challenging, but very rewarding. You um, mentioned before you were you were you were in a boot camp. I believe, yeah. and when I think about boot camps, in, 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 in like there's a WordPress boot camp, all different types of boot camps. So, what was that boot camp like, and how was it helpful? So, the boot camp was really great because it was open to PhDs exclusively, um, PhD students, recent PhDs looking to make that transition into data science. And one thing that is unique about the PhD is that you're doing research and you're mm -hmm. answering uh, you're answering questions to complicated things that other people in the field haven't done before. Um, so we have this unique skill set, this unique critical thinking skill set, um, an analytical and statistical background, um, but not necessarily all of the specific things that are used um, in the industry. So the data science bootcamp was primarily to get us all caught up mm -hmm. um, to the most common skills that data scientists in industry use. Um, uh, and we did a we did a capstone project. My capstone project was actually predicting the winner of the Stanley Cup, and mm -hmm. uh, we were, we found out the other day that we were correct and that the Colorado Avalanche took home the Stanley Cup, which was really exciting. Um, uh, and it was it was great because we used an approach that that uh, wasn't done before by looking at individual player data and taking a sort of like fantasy approach where you you put in all the little pieces of the team and that is what gives you um the likelihood of winning and it worked so so, so i'd love to get a sense from you and i'm going to ask adam first i guess because adam actually has been the most recent one in job search or what are the things that you needed to do to kind of get ready for job search as someone just starting out yeah so i mean we got coached up a little bit so i went to school at northeastern um which is big on co-opting and co-op experience 
So in college, we had a lot of kind of like coaching internally on kind of like how to prepare for job search. So I guess it kind of wasn't as jarring um, when we kind of did it for real. Um, but I would say, you know, um, for me, I think it was important to just kind of like reflect on my experiences um, and like update my resume, of course. Um, something they told me that like, you know, I didn't know was like, you know, especially even at the early stage, you know, tailor your resume to specific jobs. So like there were a couple different versions of my resume out to different jobs, um, which like, you know, I guess was like, uh, kind of important to like note that like I was you know able to do that and it's not just one resume you're just passing out to people um, but also yeah looking back on my experiences my resume um, LinkedIn um, making sure that's buffed uh, up basically just kind of making sure that I'm presenting myself the way I'm presenting myself that like you know I had these experiences in school and how can I kind of turn it around and kind of optimize uh, how I'm looking at them so that I can uh, kind of you know make myself look, I guess, uh, the, the best for whatever job I'm going for. So I want to bring Brian in right now, because Brian's actually taking a sort of a break from work. And I thanks a lot for, for checking in. I, um, the question I have for you, Brian, is that first of all, people reached out to you on LinkedIn at one point for the jobs, right? And um, all the but first before that, can you give me an idea in a general way what you do? Because one of the things we talk about in job search is you want to make it as simple as possible for people to understand what you do. Because I mean, you've all got complex jobs. So if you had to talk to the general group, what would you talk about in terms of what your what your day to day job is like? Um, so yeah, so I would say I'm a uh, digital uh, product lead mm -hmm. at a, um, a healthcare advertising agency. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to put it really simply, what I do is I act as a, a liaison between the project management team and the dev team uh, to make sure that any of the um, my agency in general is a little less is a little more print focused than digital focused so a lot of the team members and the project managers um, aren't as uh, tech and that's kind of where I lend a hand and kind of help them shepherd any digital tactics that they might um, need some help with, or if they're a little less knowledgeable in that area. So if anyone has any questions for this wonderful, wonderful group, definitely post them and we'll actually share um, share the questions here. Now, Brian, the current job you're in, how did they find you? Was that um, email? Was that- um, It was LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah, they, they just uh, called, called me, basically. They just reached out to me on LinkedIn and I, um, at the time happened to be um, pretty ready for a change. So um, definitely was willing to hear them out. And I've been with my current employer for about two years now, and I'm uh, very happy with them. And, and I, think, I, uh, I think, I'm sorry, the surprise, you haven't been in the office yet during this whole time. No, I've never been in the office. And so, there's no uh, pressure to go into the office. Mm -hmm. um, we can if we want to, we just have to book it in advance. So uh, a lot of teams have been using it um, if they want to, like if they're you know, on a tight deadline and uh, they need to kind of just like physically be together or like a, a lot of times, um, if, you, if you ever worked in an agency, you know that like uh, pitches are like their own beast. And um, I really don't know how you would work on a pitch remotely well. I've worked on a pitch remotely poorly. I don't know how you would do a good job of working on a pitch remotely. Uh, Dad, I don't mean to commandeer the room, but I actually kind of have a question for Brian too. Go ahead, absolutely. Thank you, Dad. Um, Brian, how did you kind of feel like the, I guess like interviewing process was like different from uh, like FCB Cure where like, they reached out to you as opposed to like other opportunities where like you are the one initiating it. Like, did you kind of feel that there was like a difference? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually hadn't had that many people reach out to me and I, I definitely, um, I don't think I ever made it past like the initial screener for anyone who did. Um, but I did for cure and um, yeah, it, it felt like they, actually did want me which was so christine has the question and i guess it's mainly to you brian 
the layoffs we're hearing about is it is that happening at your company um or are things pretty uh pretty pretty okay got that COVID money baby <laughs> what do you what do you mean by the COVID money baby what do you mean by COVID money uh one of our um couple of our clients uh have uh COVID treatment drugs we are set don't worry healthcare never dies. Again. healthcare never dies um, so you're, uh, you're, is your company hiring always okay so i want to get back to you work at um, TV um, what do you I find or what would you tell someone starting out like yourself to take because i we all know kind of what you do but we don't really know what you do um what are some of them and, and i don't mean that in a negative way um <laughs> what are some of the things that that you found when you're in that boot camp when you're talking with other people did they share did you share common experiences with that was that a helpful thing to do to go to that besides from the the, the certification absolutely so one thing that's common i think to a lot of us um uh pursuing a higher degree is that we experience a lot of uh imposter syndrome and uh, we, too. Well, yeah. we, we, and I, yeah, it's not terribly unique, but, um, you know, we are trained in something that's extremely specific and it can be really difficult to go out, um, into the professional world and find a way to explain how your skills are transferable. Um, so there were a ton of people that said like, oh, you know, I only, you know, I'm only an astrophysicist. How is that? Uh, you know, no one's going to want that. And it's like, no, that's extremely impressive because you have a, a math background, you have a statistics background, and it's really helpful not only to get the certification and learn those extra skills, um, but it was a great networking opportunity um, to interact with the people who've already gone through the boot camp and see what their transition has been like to industry. So what I would say is definitely, um, you know, start networking early. Um, make a LinkedIn. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, this might be surprising for people here to hear, but um, in academia, no one really uses LinkedIn. So people don't really understand um, the differences between networking in, in industry and networking in academia is that it's very online here um, in industry and people use LinkedIn heavily. I think I read something like 85% of industry jobs use LinkedIn to find their candidates. So you definitely need one. Um, and, uh, you know, try and find a way to explain your skills in a more general sense. You know, if I came on here and I started talking about striatal TH interneurons, there probably is not one person that would understand what that means. But everyone's heard of machine learning and everyone's heard of statistics. So you need to find a way to speak in plain English about what you do. So I want to do some more shout outs here. I have Deanna Chris from Chicago and Sarah. I'm really happy Sarah joined. She's actually Brenda Miller's intern, and I believe she's actually looking for a job, too. So I was hoping that she would come as well. Um, and uh, some of my other New Jersey folk are here. Um, Christine was happy to hear about your um, the job that you have there and the fact that there's an opportunity. Um, one thing I really wanted to touch on a little bit is the perception. And this is from people of our age about um that there's a perception that that young that young folks youngins as brian would say um um don't really want to work with people of our age and that there's this competition or that if we apply for a job and someone of your age is interviewing us we're going to have this negative connotation so um just get and anyone can answer this because this is a perception uh, I don't agree with the perception, but how do you think when you're talking to working with people of our age, you know, anyone? Yeah, I guess I can leapfrog because I was just most, I guess I was the most recent one to go through the interview process. Um, yeah, so like uh, me, like working in engineering, um, kind of, I guess, like the general structure is that, like, you know, uh, for most of the interviews, you'll be interviewing with like the director or whoever the technical lead is for whatever team you're serving. And that person usually is a more senior role. Um, so, you know, I definitely had a lot of experience. Um, like, you know, like I'm not, you know, interviewing with a bunch of 25 year old kids or whatever. Um, and for me, I don't think that really changes the way I prepare for an interview. 
Um, I mean, I, I think like I'm still trying to like convey, you know, like my skills the same way, you know, I think for me, it's, it was important for me to kind of just like show my personal side too, and not my technical side. And I think regardless of who I'm interviewing with, um, that was still something I wanted to try to be able to make like a personal connection with them. Um, talking with, uh, like, you know, like my friends who, you know, we were all going through job search together. Um, I would say no one was really, I guess, like afraid of like working with, you know, like older people or anything like that. Um, especially because where we are in our stage, we're trying to get our hands, you know, in as many different, uh, buckets as possible and working with more, uh, you know, experienced people is kind of a great way to do that. Um, what I would say I would, if, if it would, would be something would be more of like a culture thing. So like, if you want to work at, you know, a startup type culture, that's, you know, it may happen to skew younger, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, at a specific company that like, you know, I'd be worried about working with certain people, but it's like whatever types of companies, I guess you're looking at, maybe it'd be a way that can manifest itself. And I know Brianna, you, well, first I'm going to Alex. Freund, my my good friend, has a question. Brianna, do you know someone good that can help with LinkedIn profiles? Well, the first person I think of is my my LinkedIn rock star uh, father-in-law, <laughs> Kenneth Lang, uh, does help people build their LinkedIn profiles professionally. And he's given me a lot of really great advice on how to develop the About Me section, how to sell yourself, um, different labels that you can put um, you know, right in your header. I mean, that's a really important uh, place to tell people um, who you are and what you want to do. Um, I personally, I can say for, you know, uh, younger people, people just finishing school, try to see if your school also has resources for that kind of thing. It's, again, academia isn't necessarily the most developed um, in LinkedIn specifically, but here at Rutgers, um, I went through the iJobs program and they did have some seminars on uh, building your LinkedIn profile. This was a program specifically for biomedical scientists looking to get into industry. So there were a lot of helpful resources there. Um, also in the boot camp, the boot camp I went through was called um, through the Air Dosh Institute. Um, they had some good advice, not only on building your LinkedIn profile, but on your resume. Um, uh, for this industry specifically. So I would also try to seek out industry specific resources um, for what you want to do because um, different industries look for uh, different points in your resume. Do they care more about a portfolio, for example, um, or are they looking for specific certifications, certain skills? Um, someone within the industry could definitely um, point you in the right direction. And Brian, does anyone else have any other tips? Yeah, Brian, anything you'd like to everyone. chime in with? Um, I would say to try and load it up with as many buzzwords as possible. Um, you want to try and uh, get caught by as many of those SEO uh, site crawlers as possible. So if um, there's something technical, if there's a uh, an acronym or something, uh, I would say that you should both um, put the acronym in there uh, so that um, people know that you know the industry jargon, but also expand that acronym in case someone's looking for the uh, the whole string, or if they're just looking um, for the uh, you know if, if, like a, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, well, we, we have uh, here Brian Stanfield. Brian Stanfield. Brian Stanfield. <laughs> I'm thinking her last name. Brian Stanfield. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, you know, one thing, you know, and I have to laugh, not laugh that way, but one thing that, that I, I'm learning from all three of you in different ways. You know, I, I think we all talk, we always want to be learning. Brian knows more about SEO and the like than I do. Yeah, I, um, I mean, and uh, uh, I've tried to bluff my way a few times with him, but I can't. Um, uh, Brianna, you've told me a lot about the challenges you're facing uh, at school, not personal, but the personal stuff and not to get into specifics. Um, and, um, you know, Adam, um, when I see how you made it through um, COVID, going to school the same with you, Brianna, it, it, it's it's a great testament to the fact that you didn't really you know stop 
you know, with what you're doing. I'd be curious to know um, what you think about um, going back. Are you all comfortable going into a work, into work 25 days a week? Would you prefer hybrid or what are your well, thoughts? Well, 25 days a week is a, is a lot for me. Um, right, right. I wouldn't want to do 25. No. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, for me personally, like the roles that I'm looking at are pretty lab intensive. Um, so like even uh, at like the co-op I was at uh, during COVID, um, I went back into the office like a month or so later, um, and my my next co-op was fully uh, in person. Um, I think something interesting, um, like talking with my friends versus talking with like I guess like you know family members and like you know people who aren't just fresh out of college, um, is that like I definitely see like obviously everyone's talking about like this like great migration like kind of like back at home to like do work. I know for example Brianna is like really looking for remote opportunities. And that's something that's really attractive to her. Um, for a lot of us, like, you know, fresh out of college, like a lot of kids who like, you know, don't want to be home all day and like, you know, don't really mind the commute if they can, you know, maybe get compensated a little for it. Like if you can get more money for a job because it's not as in demand right now because people don't want to go um, in person as much. So it's kind of almost working in our favor a little bit if you are comfortable which like a lot of kids, you know, want to be able to like, you know, meet their coworkers and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's kind of everyone's kind of getting what they want out of it, which I think is a uh, pretty pretty cool to see. So one one thing I've heard, uh, and I'm not looking for a job now, but people who are looking for a job want more of the the family, the lifestyle balances, and want more flexibility, whether it's just COVID or not. So, um, and I think most employers want to do that, but. So I'd ask you, Brianna and Brian, what are the most important things to you when you have a job besides the obvious, which is making a lot of money and stuff? I mean, is it more important? You know, what are the things you think that you'd like to see or suggest, um, you know, that when you interview things, you want to make sure that your companies have? Them? You know, to me, flexibility is really important. Um, you know, a, a job that would require me to go into the office can you guys still hear me? I think my headphones. Yeah, I can. We can hear you. Okay, all right. Um, it's not a deal breaker necessarily to go into the office yet. Um, you know, is it is it really necessary? Like, why are you asking your employees to come in? Is it because you they need to, you know, uh, work with equipment in person? Do they need to meet with people in person? Maybe there is a valid reason, but I personally appreciate the flexibility and the trust. Um, that an employer would have in an employee to work effectively from home. Um, definitely also saves a lot of money and a lot of time to not have to commute somewhere, um, especially if that commute is into New York City, which a lot of the jobs that I'm looking at previously would have been in New York City. So um, definitely something that I'm looking for um, uh, in a future employer is is um, that flexibility and that trust. Um, but again, it, it, these things are in a deal breaker. It's really more about evaluating what is necessary for an employee in terms of in-person work. So Brian, how do you work with your different teams? I mean, you're all um, remote. Do you use Teams? Do you use Zoom? Is it email? What's How do you actually collaborate? Uh, it's Teams mostly, yeah. Um, but I hate it. Uh, Why? Because it's not Slack. What's, now, what's Slack? I can, I I can plus one I want to... does suck, and I'll plus one Slack as well. Right, so what is Slack? Who wants to... It's like have Teams, that? but better, except um, there aren't any voice calls. I don't know. It's basically... I, it's just like, every, like everyone has their own interface now. And I just think, you, you know, in terms of, like, having everyone... Like, Skype, for, Skype is, like, the big one. That was kind of the first big one to the game. But I think Slack just kind of does it the cleanest and it's the least intrusive um, and it's kind of the least painful to use. So I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Am I assuming that you're all welcome to uh, connect with people on the call and- um... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Open to connect with anyone and everyone. For sure. And if you're looking to get into the uh, medcom industry, uh, let me know. I think it's so important um, to do that. And, um, you know, I, I, I had the idea for this call after mid a while ago. Um, and it was just something that always just seemed like a good thing. But I wanted it, but I think the timing is perfect here because, Brian, I didn't mean to, 
you know, not mention you got a promotion recently at work. So uh, the, yeah, the, question, thanks. the question I have is this, and we all ask the same thing. Um, is does the promotion evolve? What is what's the change in the uh, promotion from what you're doing now from before? Great. So I basically moved from like the project management side to the, the product side. So like I went from being the liaise to being the liaiser. Okay. So Alex has a question, which is something we struggle with. Your experience working with people from different cultures, they think and interact differently than us. Do you find that that's the case? Is, is Alex right? Or do you have, um, or, or not? Um, so one of the things I actually really loved about going to Rutgers was the diversity. Rutgers has a very diverse campus and is very open to admitting international students. So mm -hmm. um, many of my closest friends are from the Middle East, from different parts of Asia, different parts of Europe. Um, and what I've actually found is that it's not so much um, a cultural difference in working. A lot of times it's just a language barrier. And with a little bit of patience and um, a little bit of time, uh, it's, it's more than possible that you're going to overcome that um, and that you're really going to learn um, a lot from people um, from different cultures. And um, I think, you know, maybe one thing that's unique about my background is that we all come from a science background and, and uh, science transcends culture and language. Um, so I would just encourage people to have a little bit of patience and um, maybe consider that just if, if you give people a little bit of time to learn English a little bit better, that you're going to... Um, uh, you're going to have a really good experience working with a diverse group of people. So Adam, um, when you were going through the interview process, what, what did you have to do to prepare for the interviews? I mean, because um, some I think were, were by Zoom and I think some were in person. So what were some of the things you had to do? Yeah, so um, I would say, I mean, you know, uh, Bree, definitely uh, tell me, you know, if this is kind of similar to what you're going through. Um, but I would say basically unilaterally, you'd have like a phone screen, and then, um, you know, if you make, if you make it past the screen there, they'll have like a Zoom call or, you know, whatever platform with the hiring team. And then for me, like the third, the final step or whatever, third, fourth, whatever would be after that would be like uh, in person. That's where you have like your presentation, the panel, you know, your on-site tour, kind of like more people at once. So they almost use Zoom as like another, uh, I guess, like another checkpoint to like further filter out to like reduce the number of people that eventually get in the office. Um, I mean, I feel like my pres my prep was still kind of similar in that, like, you want to know a lot, like, something, you know, my dad told me that was very valuable was look people up on LinkedIn. And I think for me, that was good to kind of see where their background was so I could work at some of their points without even saying it. And also, you know, if I saw, like, one of my... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, at Form Labs, which is a company that I'm going to be starting next week, um, the director that I had the first uh, big interview with actually worked at one of my co-ops um, before I was there. And I knew that going in. So I knew kind of how I could talk about my experience there in a way that she'd kind of understand better. So I feel like that was very valuable. Um, other than that, and just like researching, you know, the company itself and like the role, um, because it was on Zoom, it was like, pretty important to me to like still, you know, this is my bedroom, you know, but I even for this call, even though it's not strict, you know, exactly professional, I still took like, you know, 30, 45 minutes beforehand to make sure to clean things up because I want to kind of convey that, you know, I'm professional, you know, I'm organized, I have my stuff together, um, which obviously if I was only going in person, you know, that wouldn't be something I'd, I'd have to think about in that respect. So what were some of the questions they asked you, Adam? Like when you were there, I mean, some of the general questions, I'm curious. Uh, you mean like in the interviews? In the interview, yeah. Yeah, so um, at least for me, like in engineering, like there weren't a lot, there weren't a ton of behavioral questions um, other than like the tell me about yourself. It was really just like walk through your resume and just kind of highlight your experiences and they'll kind of interrupt you and ask, you know, what was your thought process on this type of thing? You know, what were your contributions? And then kind of projecting out to 
their role or, you know, kind of foreseeing what a potential fit would be. So like other, like every interview started with tell me about yourself. Every interview had, you know, why are you interested? Um, what are you looking to get out of the job? And where do you see your professional career going? Um, other than that, it was pretty specific to, you know, what you do at your job and how can you see that fitting into this job? So cool. Tim Ryan here. <laughs> it's Tim Ryan. Ryan. First of all, Tim, Tim goes to school with you, right? Is he? Um... Uh, well, is he Tim? So I'll give Tim a little shout out. Tim graduated a year before me, but we started together. Um, Tim is on his way to uh, Banff in Canada to meet up with a couple of, uh, couple of our friends uh, on a trip. So he's chiming in from the airport right now. Very nice for him to come in. So are there any questions um, you didn't ask that you wish you could have? Yeah. So uh, any questions you didn't ask in interviews? Um, I feel like our generation is like pretty like non-confrontational. Um, and I feel like there are a lot of questions where like, unless I have, unless I feel particularly comfortable with um, like whatever interviewer I'm working with, I may not want to ask two specific questions on like culture or, you know, like, you know, not like questions that aren't really professional, but more of the personal, like, how are you enjoying the work? How do you feel about the strength of the company? Which are things that I definitely think are very important, mm -hmm. but I think I didn't feel as empowered, especially on the first interview. I'd say like by the third interview, when I got to know people a little better, kind of like, you know, like level, you know, like I kind of want to pick your brain a little more, but I would say kind of those more personal questions about how the interviewer specifically feels about, <clears throat> excuse me, their, com their experience with the company and how they project the company will do itself. I think that's kind of where I could have asked more questions. So I have to ask Brian and Brianna, where's Otis right now? Yep, W. Um, Otis is taking a forced nap right now. Oh, um, really? What so would have worked to see my grandpa, but okay. Yeah. No, he, um, sometimes he gets a little jealous when all of the focus is not on him. So we decided to just put him down for a nap. But Otis is our, uh, our standard poodle. Um, and he's a very, very good boy. So Brian, what's, um, what do you feel, um, it's one of the hardest parts of your job, um, I mean, is it the hours? Is it the, all the different tasks you have to manage? No, it's um, knowing when to push people and when to ease off of them for deadlines. It's knowing when to like be a hard ass and like when uh, someone has a lot going on and you uh, you don't need something immediately, you can like ease back you know just kind of like being able to like read the room in general having um those kind of instincts i don't know i'd say that's the most important thing and the hardest thing to teach so what's going on with you guys uh this week what plans do you have is this a personal question it can be it doesn't have to be i'll leave it up to you uh i don't know i i i don't we have a barbecue on the fifth you have a family barbecue is that yeah. billable is it what is it billable i don't know that's a good question actually all right i'll have i'll reach out to uh hr that's a good thing to think Send about me a job sure. code. so um chugging away at my thesis this week I have a uh -huh. lot of writing to do the most writing i've ever had to do in my entire life um really? yes but we are seeing steely dan uh, on Thursday at the PNC Bank Art Center. So very excited for that. That'll be a good way to break it up. Oh yeah, we are doing that. <laughs> and I, and, I, and you, you're in a really stressful time now, I know, Brianna, because you're kind of finishing up everything, um, looking to graduate in August, I guess, thereabouts. And um, that's that's even more stressful, I would think, than even going on a job interview. Yeah, you know, and it's it's um, one thing I've struggled with is what exactly do I prioritize right now? I have this deadline of August um, for my dissertation, um, mainly due to funding. And I think, you know, a lot of people um, in the audience, if 
if um, if they have experience um, in a doctoral program, you know that funding kind of really is what runs everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that is my um, bottleneck at this point is that my funding is over in August and it's time for me to get out and get a job. Um, so I'm 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 really juggling getting my thesis out and on time um, and also trying to set myself up so I'm not unemployed for a significant amount of time, which means that right now is the time that I have to network aggressively and look for jobs. So uh, it's definitely been very stressful um, trying to do all of those things effectively. So what advice could the three of you give parents? Because we talk when my father was around and I was out of work, what he did for me all the time is he said, here's a great place for jobs. Here's monster.com. Um, and he'd say, here's an article about how to do a resume. And it was the best he could do because, you know, he wasn't that familiar with the job search, didn't really know. And I was like, thank you, dad, as I, was, as I would then probably just toss it in the garbage. But I can say that now because he's not around. But seriously, what would you suggest to parents who are listening to this call, who could, how they could best help their, their kids? I would say um, try to make an introduction. It, you know, you there's a good chance you don't really know exactly what your son or daughter is doing for a living. Um, but you might know kind of about what field they're going to be in. So if you know anybody that um, works in that field, um, help make an introduction uh, with your child. I would say that's a really great way to support them. Um, that... Yeah. Yeah, I would say, I, I think Bree is pretty spot on the money. I would say, like, know what you know and know what you don't, which is totally fine. Like, I know that, like, like I don't know anyone, like, none of my friends' parents are engineers or anything. I don't really, you know, like, my dad doesn't really know any engineers, for example. Um, but, like, you. I know he's great at, like, you know, like, uh, like LinkedIn advice. I know that I a lot of those transferable skills for an interview, no matter what field, are still there. But, like, you know, as Brianna said, you know, like if, you know, my dad through his vast network of connections knows someone who is more well-versed in like something like that, then, you know, like that would be like, you know, like you don't have to do everything all on your own. It's okay if, you know, you can, you, you know, you have, you know, these three tips, but you can put, you know, me in contact with someone, you know, that'd be, you know, just as good, if not even better. And I remember Brian actually went with me one time to the breakfast club. I don't know if Brian remembers that. And we went down to the breakfast club and um, who remembers Ray or whatever are the, our musician friend from Raymond from Montclair. But from what you remember about that, what did you think about going to an in-person event? I know it was a little bit a while ago, but what was your thought about it? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I didn't get a lot out of it. Okay. But that um, might have been because you weren't sure what to do or. Yeah, I'm, do like, I, I'm not going to lie. Don't, uh, don't. Don't never lie. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I really, at the time, had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, it just was not whatever anyone else there did. <laughs> so how did you get this field? Because this is, this is a little bit of a far cry from what you went to school for. Um, so how did you fall into this? Well, I went to school for English, which is to say I went to school to be professionally unemployed. Um, and uh, yeah, my, my friend was a, my really good friend was a developer at a, uh, an agency and he uh, got me a job and I like it. So, so I, I was there for a few years and now I've been at my, uh, my current agency for a couple of years. So I guess I've been in the industry for five years in September. It's kind of wild. Yeah, it's and it's you know you don't always think about that. You've been you've been in the field a while, and Brianna. You've been in school. Oh my God! Who's from Montclair? We live in Montclair. Who is well, LinkedIn? Unfortunately, the person user? that has their profile. This is a LinkedIn tip. We they have their profile, so we can't see who they are. Who is LinkedIn? Um, user? Brian and Brianna, you guys have known each other now. How many years has it been? Ten years, maybe? Longer. More than that. We were we met um, our freshman year in high school. I believe it was 2011. 
Wait, when what? We, oh, we, we graduated, graduated high school in 2011. Just kidding. Yeah, we graduated oh high school. I'm fine. Look at those two lovebirds. But yeah, we met before that. We didn't start really dating in earnest until um, uh, 2012, I want to say. It's been so long, I like can't even remember. But <laughs> yeah, so we've known each other for a very, very long time. So we've gotten to watch each other go through all like multiple iterations of personal and professional struggles. Um, so it's been great to see Brian go from not knowing what the hell he wants to do to really flourishing in his career at this point. And um, he really has a huge impact at his company and everyone loves him, which I knew, I knew one day that would happen. So any, any closing thoughts? Uh, I always like to leave to end these calls about a quarter to two because people just want to um, decompress. Adam, anything else you'd like to say to everyone out there? Um, because this is your last week of freedom. There is, um, it's different when you start working. It is not the way it was. You are working and you'll, you're going to maybe live for the weekend. So anything you'd want to suggest to people? Uh, I mean, I always, I feel like uh, from my first co-op, I kind of always realized that I liked the work dynamic more than the school dynamic because I like the fact that you don't take your work home with you. Hopefully my job is that way where I don't, you know, I like, as you said, having the weekend to yourself. Um, I don't know. I guess I would say advice. I mean, I don't really know if I'm in a position to be shouting out wisdom, but you well, know. You can shout out wisdom to the young, to, to people on the call that are of your age and a little bit yeah. older. I uh, enjoy, you know, like I, I had like a month or so off before uh, but between school and uh, starting work. And I feel like that was really good for me to kind of reset myself and get myself, you know, excited to work and not make it another assignment, but like something I'm really excited to apply myself for. So, you know, especially in this day and age, like where it feels like we're getting worked as hard as we can, you know, don't be afraid to take a mental health day or like a mental health week or something like that. You know, it's okay to give yourself a little time for you to be the most productive version of yourself. How about you, Brian? Any final thoughts that you want to share? Any words of wisdom? Yeah, I got, got some words for all my humanities folks. Uh, don't be afraid to showcase your soft skills. Um, it's not always about the certs that you have. Um, being able to show that, and, and not just in like the cliche way, like excellent written and communication skills. Like, yeah, I, I get it. But like really being able to show that you have the soft skills that like the intangibles that really make up um, an effective employee in your field, I think is underrated. Well, I want to thank, thank you guys for all joining today. Really, really appreciate it. Brian and Brianna, we will see you on Sunday for the Lang family barbecue. Of course, I'm hoping um, to see you even sooner than that, but have a great day. Give my best to Otis. We... Um, so how to connect with the three amazing guests. What I'm going to do, you guys are amazing. I'm going to put in the chat um, afterwards, I'm going to put a link to their LinkedIn URLs. Um, and Brianna, Adam, and Brian, feel free when you go back on LinkedIn to comment on all the all the comments there, you know, as a way just to kind of, because I, again, there's going to be people that are going to watch this in replay. There are going to be people that are going to see this later on. So um, you may hear from them a day or two or three, three days later, who knows how long, but thank you guys all very much for coming. Um, have a great holiday. We'll see you all next Tuesday. Claire Davis and I will be a LinkedIn audio, doing a LinkedIn audio then. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Ken. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone.